You know, nostalgia can be a powerful thing. It can persuade someone to spend a whopping $2 million for a sealed copy of the original Super Mario Bros. game or have INEO make its very first Android handheld gaming device. This is the INEO Pocket Air Retro Edition and this thing is especially designed to play old console games. And while INEO is a fairly established name in the world of Windows handheld machines at this point, the company's handhelds have always suffered from two rudimentary problems. Number one, Windows continues to remain a terrible platform for handheld gaming. And number two, they are really expensive. But I feel like the company has successfully killed two birds with one stone with the Pocket Air. It runs on Android, which is objectively better than Windows for handhelds, and this is among INU's most affordable consoles too. Starting at just $300 for the base configuration with 6GB RAM and 128GB of storage. And for that price, INU has managed to deliver a pretty stunning console that should be on your radar, especially if you're one of those nostalgic fellows looking for something capable of emulating most older game systems. I have been using it for a few weeks now, playing all sorts of games, so allow me to share all my experiences with the INEO Pocket Air in this review. Okay, the Pocket Air starts to impress the minute you hold it in your hands. And this mix of cream and red accents throughout the device looks quite beautiful to my eyes. Besides the looks itself, this is also the slimmest and the most lightweight console INEO has ever made. So compared to other mainstream handhelds like the Steam Deck, the ASUS Rogue Ally or even the Nintendo Switch, the Pocket Air is a lot more comfortable to hold on to for a longer time. Its grip is superb as well, offering the perfect resting place for the rest of my fingers. The Pocket Air earns big points from me with its Hall Effect joysticks and triggers too. As a result, it's immune to your usual controller issues like stick drift where the joystick can appear as if it's moving by itself without any input. Other than this, the D-pad, the ABXY key, shoulder buttons and all on the Pocket Air feels pretty familiar to me. After all, this is essentially the same chassis as the Aya Neo Air that I reviewed last year. There are also a bunch of handy buttons laid out across the device, which includes the select and the menu keys on the left, while the right side hosts a home button and the IR launcher with which you can customize different settings like performance modes, uh, fan speeds, gyro sensitivity, RGB lighting, etc. Okay, in terms of ports, the INEO Pocket Air comes with a single USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-C connection at the bottom, capable of display output next to a 3.5mm headphone jack and a hybrid SIM slot. Yes, you can even use a 4G SIM here for mobile data, but keep in mind that it does not support phone calls or messages. For display, the Pocket Air uses the same 5.5 inches AMOLED panel as the INEO Air with a 60Hz refresh rate, 1080p resolution, a traditional 16 is to 9 aspect ratio, and 315 nits of peak brightness. So everything from sharpness to viewing angles and contrast levels is amazing on this thing. Outdoor visibility under direct sun can be a struggle, but just find proper shade and you should be ready to game even when you're out. Similarly, its color reproduction is pretty great too with 100% sRGB and 99% DCI-P3 coverage. Its Pico quality, however, is nothing to write home about and I think that's something that an update can fix. Anyway, since this thing runs on Android, what I like about the Pocket Air is um, all the UI complications and other hiccups I had with INEO's Windows handhelds are more or less non-existent here. Plus, the actual gaming performance of the Pocket Air is pretty amazing too. But before you get too excited, let me just tell you that this is not the most powerful Android handheld that you can get for some $300. That honor goes to the newly launched AYN Odin 2 instead, which brings a more powerful Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip compared to the two-year-old Dimensity 1200 in the Pocket Air. Then again, this guy did not have much trouble emulating most retro game systems that I tried. Starting with Sega Dreamcast, I used the Redeem emulator to revisit some classics like Crazy Taxi and Soul Calibur and the Pocket Air had no trouble pushing 60 FPS on average on either of them, even when I had the fan speed set to the lowest. Well, that reminds me, INU also lets you toggle between three fan speed settings and I honestly never felt the need to crank it up to the fastest. This thing's is perfectly nice and cool when emulating most retro consoles. 
Next up, I tried a few of my favorite PlayStation 1 games and with the internal resolution set to 2x for better visuals, Tekken 3 and Street Fighter EX 2 Plus landed with a steady 60fps while Spider-Man ran at a smooth 30fps. Whereas for GameCube, I played Pokemon Colosseum and the Pocket Air managed a fairly steady 30fps at 1080p resolution with 4x anti-aliasing. Yet, I had to dial it down to 720p on AAA titles like Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess for a similar gameplay experience. Uh, likewise, all my PSP games ran at a smooth 60fps too with render resolution set to 1080p. I did notice some slight frame drops on God of War Ghost of Sparta after a while, but that's no biggie. And with Ether SX2, the Pocket Air played my PS2 games like Max Payne 2, Downhill Domination, and GTA San Andreas at a steady 30fps as well at 2.5x upscaling. The only system where it struggled was the Nintendo Switch. Um, I know Switch emulation is quite tough, but I've had much better luck on phones with a Snapdragon chip. On the Pocket Air, however, it was always a 50-50 chance whether my games would work or not. And I think this is mostly due to the poor optimization of this MediaTek-made processor on the Pocket Air. Okay, apart from emulation, you can also stream or natively play all sorts of Android games here. And I really enjoyed playing Asphalt 9 and Diablo Immortal on the Pocket Air since they support controller input. Whereas with its active cooling system, I was getting a fairly stable 60fps gameplay at at high graphic settings. Even Genshin Impact managed around 55 FPS on average at medium graphics. Uh, there were some frame drops after around 10 minutes or so, but this guy picked up its pace once again when I set the fan speed to max. This one does not work with controllers though, like most other Android games. Um, Ioneo says it is developing a virtual controller mapping feature to solve this issue, but I wish this was available on the launch day itself. Moving on, the battery life on the Pocket Air is decent enough, I'd say. When emulating PS1 or PS2 games with the fan profile set to low or sometimes even turning it off entirely, it lasted me around 4 hours on average. But the battery will easily drain when setting the fan mode to max and playing some modern GPU-heavy Android games. You can fill it up in about an hour and 15 minutes using the 65W PD charger, although it's surprising to see that INU has not shipped a compatible power brick this time. All right, let's wrap things up now. And for the most part, it's clear that I'm quite fond of the Pocket Air. I truly am. INEO has won me over with the aesthetics, comfort of use, display, and even the performance on this thing. So it really is an easy recommendation for me if you are happy with Pocket Air's performance. But if more powerful system is what you want, then the AYN Odin 2 that I mentioned before is going to be a much better value. It uh, does compromise a bit in terms of design and display, but that's a significantly more capable Android handheld. Likewise, INEO itself has announced a more powerful Android handheld called Pocket S that's set to arrive next month. It's obviously going to cost more than the Pocket Air, but INEO fans who want the company's flagship Android handheld experience should wait for that one instead. It's powered by the Snapdragon G3 X Gen 2 chip that's especially for handhelds. And if this official benchmark is anything to go by, it seems that the G3 X Gen 2 absolutely smokes the regular 8 Gen 2 chip when it comes to sustained performance. So everybody, that was all for my full review of the all-new INEO Pocket Air Retro Edition. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Till then, I'm Pratima Adhikari and I will see you in my next video.